Hey guys, welcome back. So today is 507 plot day. I don't really know what that means, but uh, nothing much. Exactly how many Chia coins I have. Alright, so today I'm going to bring to you a quick tutorial on how to install and set up a harvester on Ubuntu. It should be really quick because it only took me about, you know, 50 takes and a lot of edits to break it down to maybe 15 minutes of this recording. Straight, simple, and to the point, no issues. I didn't run into any issues and you shouldn't either because I have demonstrated the entire process straight from the GitHub of Chia's wiki on how to install Chia and how to set up the harvester in Chia. I went through each step and I identified each step because there was so much confusion when I saw people saying that they're so confused on setting up a harvester based on Chia's GitHub instructions. I think I remediate that. Hopefully it will help you guys out. So let's get on to it. Hey guys, so today we're gonna be going over how to install Chia on Ubuntu and how to set it up as a harvester. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the GitHub page of Chia and there are instructions on how to install it in Ubuntu. So I am gonna go step by step on how to go about this route. So once you're here, you type this in, you copy and paste, it makes life a lot easier. And then you type in your pseudo password, let that run. Of course, I will speed things up as this progresses. Then you take the next line, once that completes, and paste it as well. Now we're going to take the third line, which is installing git, copy that and paste. Now we're going to go to the fourth line, which is right here. Make sure you copy the entirety if you don't have your window all the way expanded because it does come across. We will paste that in here as well. So I already installed it here. So that's why it's telling me that it already exists. So the next thing you want to do is go into the directory that it's asking you to, which is the CD Chia dash blockchain. So let's do that. So we can copy that as well, or you can just type it out, whichever one you choose. Now we're in this directory, we want to install, copy. And this is pretty much what you're doing throughout the entire process is copying the commands and pasting into your terminal window of your operating system, which is Ubuntu. So once that finishes, we're gonna copy the activate command copy and paste and now we're in the Ven V. you should notice that now now here you have the option to install the GUI if not you can continue on and we will go on to doing the harvester portion of it let's just have it installed just in case you decide to want to launch the GUI on this machine for whatever given reason no okay so now we're gonna go into this directory which we're gonna copy and then paste and then we will choose this last command to run and paste that as well. Now, perfect. Now we will go into part two to set this machine up as a harvester. All right, guys, now that we have Chia installed, we are going to set this machine up as a harvester. Of course, this is my test machine. So a lot of the directories that I'm pointing to is just going to be a generic temp directory location. It's not going to be specific, but I am going to create that first plot so you can see what it's supposed to look like once it's successful. So let's start off with these couple of steps that they have here. This is farming on multiple machines. This is actually the installation directions that I'm also going to be linking in the description below. So now we also have the command line referencing how to use the different switches i'm also going to include that in the description below this will tell you exactly which switch what letters does exactly what all that information is here how many threads how many buckets how many plots and all that other information that will be required when you create the plot in order to do all that we need to get the harvester up and running first let's see the first thing we need to do is make sure your main machine ip address on port 8447 is accessible by the harvester machine now on ubuntu this is what you would do you can tell net into the same ip address with the port number to verify that you can in fact see the farmer on that ip address once you tell it into the ip address with the specific port the one that we're testing right now it'll say connected to the ip address which is verifying that your port is open communications between the two machines so number one is totally done so let's just clear this out so we don't have any confusions we have verified that number one is done shut down all chia demon processes with chia stop chia stop all dash d so one thing i noticed that we have to do when you're launching the active activate 
when you're working on any terminal, PowerShell, in Windows or Linux, possibly even Apple, is that you have to activate the entire process of Chia in order for it to start responding to calls or functions. So we're activating, now we're in the Ven V. This is where you would see, when you see this little Ven V here, is when you know that Chia is active. Okay, so now we're gonna type in this Chia stop all dash D. Now it recognizes it as a application and it's saying that the daemon is not started yet, couldn't connect to the Chia daemon, meaning that the daemon was never started to begin with. If it was started, it would have stopped it and that command would have done so. Now, if we did the opposite of Chia start all, it would have started the daemon and then would have told you that it was gonna do that. Okay, so we're good right now. We're at step two, we completed that successfully. Make a backup of your settings in the harvester. I absolutely have nothing going on in this machine for me to back up anything. They put in this, they put this in here as a precaution because they don't know what kind of machine that you were planning to use as a harvester and they just wanted you to save and didn't want to be liable for anything that was missing or messed up that was accidentally deleted because you were messing around installing a harvester on your banking computer or your, your stock market computer. All right, so let's jump on to the next one, which is number four. So now we're gonna run chia init dash c directory on your harvester, where the directory is the copy of your main machine C8 directory that you put on the temp folder. This command creates a new certificate signed by your main machine's C8. In short, that entire sentence is, look for your damn C8 directory that you copied over from your farmer, which is in essence your full node that you would have copied either through the network or from a USB drive. So here, this is where I put mine. I already had copied it over because I didn't want to waste any time. So I have it in my documents folder. Now, if you go up here and you hold control L, it actually tells you the exact location of where that is. Control C now and go back to my terminal window. I want to make sure that I have the correct command typed in. So it's chia init dash C space now the directory and location of where your ca folder is i'm going to paste that in there and hit enter now you can see the ca folder has imported all the certificates that is required now it's going to be this harvester will be communicating back to your full node farmer so we're not helping some random farmer out on the internet with some random ca directory that we imported a certificate and now we're helping someone else farm and plot the ca verifies that Okay, so that's very crucial. Everyone has to understand that the, the certificate is what gets your machines to communicate, the harvesters to communicate with the full note, your farmer. Okay, so now we are finished with number four. See, that was pretty quick. Now we're going to number five. I actually spoke more than it took to, to actually get this done. So open the Chia mainnet config YAML, file in each harvester, and enter your main machine's IP address in the remote harvester's farmer pair section, not full node. So this tells you exactly the location that you're looking for. We can do it two ways. You can do it through the command line and you can do a nano and then start going in and edit the actual file. Or you can even go through the actual location of where it was installed. And for me, I'll, I'll show you this way. So this Chia blockchain, we're going to go into, let's see where it said it was. Uh, Chia. So I just typed it in and then we go in here. This is the config.yaml. All right, so this is the config.yaml.chia slash mainnet slash config slash config.yaml. This is exactly where we are. I've already modified this file, but I wanted to show you exactly what we are looking for because some people got confused. Like, hey, I see multiple locations where you can put the farmer host, a farmer pair host IP address. Yes, there is, but there's a farmer section, there's a harvester section. So you have to make sure that you're going into the harvester section because this is the machine for the harvester. Now, if this was a farmer, then obviously you would do the other way around. So you see where it says harvester here? That means it's for this function, this server, this machine is gonna be acting as a harvester. You're setting it up as a harvester. So this is where you would set the host. And I already done that already. You see the host is 192.168.1.197. And this is where you would put that IP address. And it details out the same location of where we're looking at. And just to clarify, and when I mentioned the other portions of it, see it says full node, and then you have a different host and an introducer. This yaml.config, this config.yaml file is the harvester is what we're concentrating on because that's what we're setting up the machine as right now. So of course you also see the same information up here, but this is not it. 
okay this is this is for the farmer information the farmer if this was an entire farmer meaning the full node the host would be itself meaning the, the full node would be itself the harvester would be itself because it would be doing two things right it'll be farming and plotting so now that we have that ip address in there now i'm going to show you one more time because I, i'm just repetitive like that right here under the harvester section under the farmer pair host you put in the ip address of that phone node that you have on your network and leave the port number alone now we're just going to x out it's going to ask you to save you save okay because i already done that you save i'll close out of this that's fine so we are done with number five we are cleared of number five now we're on number six which is the fun part we actually get to start the chia harvester now so chia start harvester dash r now we're active we're we're ready to go what do we do next there's nothing here we just can completed the six steps now seventh step is actually to stop the harvester you don't want to do that you want to start creating plots you don't want to start stop the harvester for no apparent reason at this point because you just literally just started there's no reason to stop it now if you continue on to this wiki of on github the install is done your your harvester is complete all right, so now we have to go back and this is what I'm going to reference back in my description as well. These are the three top three websites. Installing Chia, get your harvester up and running and the command line referencing for how to plot in the command line. So this is very crucial now. So we're just going to go look for the section where we're looking at the plots and how to plot in the command line. You can go through all these different switches and some of the switches are we are going to use and some of them I'm not. By default, thread size, thread amount is two. If you want to specify more than that, you would put in the slash R. Number of threads is two usually optimal. Multi-threading is only in phase one though, okay? Remember that. I've said that in a couple of my earlier videos as well. If you put slash R and you put two, there's really no reason do that but now if you put slash r and put three that's a whole different story let me demonstrate what i mean by that so right now there is examples that you can just take which is a lot easier than just typing the entire thing out if some of these examples fit your category now the k32 and i'm going to control c that now you can see there's a, a few differences here this one it has only the temp and the destination file directory and nothing else so that means everything else is pretty much default but if you look at the bottom k32 one there's a negative there's a dash b which is 4000 so that's the memory and then there's a dash n5 so what is a dash n let's just take a quick look at what a dash n is did i skip it already no 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 i didn't even reach it yet right here number of plots okay number of plots that will be made in sequence once the plot is finished it will be moved to a final location dash d before the starting the next plot in sequence i haven't learned in the command line you can't parallel so all you can do right now is put it in queue but what you can do on top of that to make a parallel is open up another terminal window and start another plotting process now you have it you can set it off in queues and parallel queues so you can actually open up multiple uh, command line windows or terminal windows to launch another plotting instance or process at this at the same time or you could stagger it i copied that already which I did and I just did it again. Now I paste it into my terminal window. Of course, this path to final directory does not exist on my machine. There's no path that's called that. So I will have to define what my path is. And the, the path that I'm gonna show you right now is something I just created temporarily. It's just my temp drive. And you can see I have temporary plots here randomly. What you can do is, uh, uh, and again, you can click up here on the window where the home and temp is and you hit control l it actually brings up the directory of this location i'll copy that and then what you're going to do next is just replace it your final destination directory let's just say if it was that would be you you paste it in there and of course my temp directory that path that fake path does not exist it's just an example I will copy and, and I'll paste the same directory because right now this machine is just a test machine. I don't have the space to accommodate a real plotting. I am going to run this plot. But what will happen is it will initialize, it'll start the whole thing and it'll look like it's going fine, but only up until the point where I run out of space and then obviously it would fail. But 
This command, chi plot create a K32, memory of 4,000 uh, 4, megs, and then by default, the thread is gonna be two, even though we didn't specify that. And then the temp directory is my home harvester temp, and my final destination, once it finishes temping, will be in the same directory. Of course, you, when you set this up as a legitimate harvester and you have actual drive space that you wanna utilize on different drive letters or different directories, you can define all that. So now I'm gonna hit enter. You will know it's working as soon as it starts the computing table one. You can see all that information here now, plot size 32, 4,000 megabytes, bucket size, and the default threads that it's actually using. So this is a awesome way of doing the harvester, fast and simple. Did my best to explain it as easily as possible because I'm not a guru in this and I was able to follow the directions on this GitHub. Now, hopefully I'm able to make this as entertaining for you guys as possible. Now, once that completes, depending on how fast your process processor or your memory and your hard drives or if you're running to NVMe or SSD or just a regular hard drive that you have obviously it'll take a few hours now the other thing is when you go back to your full node click on advanced view now if you don't see it there make sure to click on the key it's sort of like a log off session then click back into your session because I know it's very crucial that you guys don't want to kill your plots if you're still plotting you don't want to shut down the GUI so just go back into you click on your full node you can see your your plots uh, accumulating on your full node you can go to your farming process and you will see the last attempted proof was shot showing up in conjunction with your full nodes plots that it has it will not combine the two plots together it will keep it on a separate separate line of saying how many plots the harvester actually has but it doesn't call it a harvester and there's really no way of naming it there are some limitations with the GUI the current Chia GUI hopefully they'll be able to fix that where we can actually name what our harvesters are because as this grows any bigger what happens if you have 20 harvesters you want to be able to identify them in the GUI something more unique opposed to the keys or the whatever they pre-assign these harvesters okay that's pretty much it i want to thank you guys for being here please like comment and subscribe and make sure to share this with anyone who's willing to install and try ubuntu for the first time because it's really simple to get a harvester chia installed all set up easy Easy peasy, nothing to worry about. And if you have any questions, you know how to reach me. My email is on my YouTube, Reddit, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, you guys can find me. All right, thank you guys again. See you soon, bye.